It is communion. But I believe that most Christians today, ex they, they set their expectation in communion so low. So low. Mm -hmm. How many of you have spent weeks of prayer, months of prayer, <clears throat> over a year of prayer, praying maybe an hour, hour and a half, two hours a day, crying out what Moses said to you. God, I don't care. I don't care to be a great preacher. I don't, I don't care to be known. I don't, I've got to have you or I will die. Knowing that yes, you are regenerate. Yes, the Spirit of God does indwell you. But that you want more of Him. You just want Him. You don't want some ministry. You don't want to conquer this. You don't want to be known for this. You just want Him. You will be content to tell Him, give every other gift to every other friend around me, but just give me this one thing, even though my name perishes and no one ever remembers it, give me this one thing, to know You. To commune with You. To walk with You. I believe, I know, the person who sets their sights on a biblical foundation of the knowledge of God and seeks God violently in prayer. I must have more of you. I must experience more of you. I must know more of you that God will honor that. But it is enduring. It is chasing after a very, very quick stag. Don't think that you'll set your foot in the forest and the very moment you do, you will grab a hold of your prize. But it is enduring. It is seeking Him in prayer. Even in the weakness of our praying. When I... When, when I became a Christian, I would go out and try to preach on the streets. And there was never just... I was always afraid. There was never any boldness. There was, there was nothing. I just kind of walk around and hope I bump into someone. And at that time in my life, someone had given me several books, very dangerous books. For example, Leonard Ravenhill. Yeah. The Autobiography of George books about Hudson Taylor. I started looking at these men and I realized that there was something different about them. Although at times their theology would have been distinct from one another. They had something that was amazingly in common. They were men of prayer. John Hyde of India, they called him the Praying Hyde. A man of prayer. David Brainerd and the powerful works of God that he saw in New England. All these men had one thing in common. Prayer. Some of them were more reformed, like myself. Others were more Arminian. But they had one thing in common. Prayer. Prayer. And so, in the strength of my will, I told God, I'm going into this closet right now, and I'm going to pray until I know you or I die. <clears throat> Fifteen minutes later, I fell asleep. About an hour and a half later, my roommates came home and they opened up the closet and I'm in there curled up sleeping. And they're, they're just looking at me like, I mean, definitely a candidate for counseling. And you know what I did? I took an alarm clock. Closet. Because I, even until today, because I don't get a whole lot of sleep, I'll strengthen myself to go grab a hold of the horns of God's altar and intercede and be snoring in 20 minutes and then sleep all night on my knees and wake up crippled. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I just took an alarm clock and I set it for like every 15, 20 minutes. And sometimes I go to sleep and wake me up. Just an hour or so, an hour and a half, 
two hours, every night, God, it's been four months, 13 days. I, I, I just don't know you like I want to know you. But eventually, God blesses such an endeavor. And he becomes more real to you. His presence more stabilizing than anything you could ever imagine. Do not allow heretics to make you so afraid that you never pursue your inheritance. It is so sad to me when I hear believers and, and sincere believers say something like this. Man, I wish I lived back in those times when Moses lived. I mean, when God really did something. You're going, hold it. We're in the new covenant. This is the end of the ages. I mean, everything has fallen to us. Now again, I want to say this because I have to. Many people who talk this way, the great majority of anyone who talks about the supernatural today, it, it's just, it's frightening, their theology. I'm not talking about these, these just the circus that goes on in the name of the Holy Spirit. I am not going to allow them to take from me what I know to be the presence of God. 